Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Last time in the Land of Top 5, we performed an examination of some of the best kings in the series. However, while putting together that list, it became incredibly apparent to me that the world of One Piece is also filled with a lot of, how shall we say, less than great kings. So in the interest of balance, we now need to throw the spotlight of shame onto these rubbish royals. The criteria for this list is exactly the same as the former list, meaning that one needs to be considered a king in more than just name alone, generally implying that you must be officially recognized as a king of a particular nation. So this means no pirate king or sniper king, not that they'd make it onto this particular list anyway. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five worst kings in One Piece. Number five, Vinsmoke Judge. Better known as the Supreme Commander rather than King, I suppose, Judge serves as the monarch of the Germa Kingdom. This kingdom exists mainly to support its military branch known as the Germa 66, and is heavily involved in mercenary activities, as well as highly proficient scientific research, most of which also goes towards specializing in warfare. As a king, Judge has only one care in the world, and that is strength. Judge is known to easily cast those aside who are deemed too weak to serve, including his own son, Vinsmoke Sanji. To this effort, Judge has even gone to the lengths of developing disposable clone warriors to use in battle, which might sound slightly more humane at first, but brings a huge ethical debate to the table, one that Judge has no concern with. In conclusion, the German Kingdom exists to serve the interest of the Vinsmoke family alone, and that sure as hell isn't a king that I want to serve. Number 4. The King of Livniel. This unnamed king lived over 400 years ago during the era of Noland and Calgara, and the world has quite a good memory of him, with his legacy being that of the man who executed Lyra Noland, serving some much needed justice. However, in reality, this was all a propaganda ploy by the king in order to cover up his own selfish anger. When Noland returned to Livniel from one of his Grand Line voyages, he made the mistake of telling the king about Shandora, the city of gold. And the king of Livniel, being the greedy prick he is, demanded to be taken to the city, a voyage which cost countless amounts of sailors and soldiers, none of which the king cared about anyway though. When they arrived to discover nothing, the enraged king shot Noland in the back and had him publicly executed for trying to make a fool of him. So selfish, check. No regard for the lives of your people, check. And willing to sacrifice innocent citizens for the sake of your own false pride, check. Yep, the king of Livniel more than deserves his spot on this list. Number three, Wapol. This guy tends to make a lot of my worst lists, and this is no exception. Despite his title of king, Wapol holds no qualities desirable in the leader of a nation. He is self-centered, cowardly, and completely unaware of how to manage any aspect of a country. This extends to his greater knowledge of politics as well, as he was foolish enough to attack a 10-year-old Nefertari Vivi in the hopes of provoking the country of Alabaster into war, a war which Wapol would have surely lost. So obviously he has no regard for the well-being of his own people, but Wapol goes a step further than that. At one stage, this quote-unquote King took the 20 most skilled doctors in the country while murdering or banishing those who wouldn't join him so that the citizens of Drum would have to grovel at his feet to receive medical attention, even for life-threatening illnesses. And that makes Wapol a very special type of bad king. Not only does he not care about the plight of his people, but he actively works to make their living conditions worse. In fact, Wapol is such a bad king that Drum Island being sacked by the Blackbeard pirates was a more preferable outcome to the continued reign of Wapol, who fled due to his extreme cowardice. It's not often you can say that Blackbeard did the people a solid, but in this case, good job, man. Number two. Don Quixote Doflamingo. Nicknamed the Heavenly Demon, Doflamingo was the king of Dressrosa for at least a decade. Now, if I told you that Doflamingo is a former celestial dragon, then that's probably all you need to know to have him land on this list. However, we are going to go into it anyway. Like all celestial dragons, Doflamingo is immensely arrogant and believes that the lower people of the world exist merely for his manipulation and amusement. However, unlike most of the celestial dragons, Doflamingo actually possesses the strength to back up his ideals and lives with the belief that the strong get to make the rules. Oh, and we can't forget another one of Doflamingo's famous ideals, the weak can't choose the way they die, which pretty much encapsulates his attitude towards those he views as less than him, which is everyone. As a result, he will use and abuse the people of Dressrosa to suit his desires in a sadistic manner that puts even Wapol to shame. For example, he regularly turned his own citizens into toys and forced them to become slaves for his underground industries. In this case, the word king really should be replaced with tyrant because Doflamingo is one of the worst of the worst, and yet Somehow, we still have not come to the top of this list. Number one, Steli. 
Now you might be a bit confused as to why the young king of the Goa nation could possibly be worse than most of the contenders we've gone through, but it comes down to one particularly dangerous dream. Steli's ambition in life is to become a celestial dragon, and that is a terrifying thing for your leader to wish to be. Unlike Dolflamingo, who has an innate belief in himself, Steli looks up to and intimidates the world nobles, leading directly to the pain and suffering of his own people. At the very least, the celestial dragons have the decency to live on their own in Marijoie, but this man-child boy ugly thing has direct influence over people's lives, and the lengths he will go to in order to achieve his dream can only be described as horrific. Furthermore, most previous kings on this list have at the very least had some sort of strength to defend their kingdom, but Steli here is a coward of the highest order, immediately crapping his pants at the slightest sign of hostility. He has no combative ability whatsoever, making him both the most evil and the most useless king in the entire series. And that pretty much does it for the top 5 worst kings in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video then feel free to like, favourite or subscribe, and please do comment with your own shitty monarchs. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.